Hi there, I'm Johnny and today I'm going to take you through the changes we've made to the official 2D platformer demo. There were a few reasons why we wanted to do this. First, the official Godot demos currently vary quite a bit in code style, and we'd like to standardise them to help promote best practices. We also wanted to improve the feel of this demo in particular. Being a platformer, it's important that the character feels responsive. Previously, the character movement felt a little slow, so we've made some changes to address that. We use the GD script guidelines written by the GD Quest team. You can find a link to them in the description below. Let's take a look at the differences in more detail, starting with some general points. First off, the project folders have been restructured. We keep assets in one folder and scenes and scripts in another. This keeps the project nice and tidy. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the player scene. We've moved the gun logic to its own script and split the code found in the physics process function into separate functions. Decoupling systems in this way allows us to reuse them easily. We also enabled the player to travel with moving platforms, and the player no longer slides down slopes. The enemy script has had a similar treatment. We also updated the collision layer so that enemies can pass through each other, but still interact with the player and the environment. This method helps organise interactions between other objects such as coins as well. Speaking of the environment, we moved away from using a separate scene to generate tilesets, in favour of using the tileset editor directly. This feature has received improvements in recent Godot updates, so we look to take advantage of them. Platforms are no longer separated into two scenes. Instead, we have just one platform scene. If we want a platform to move, we can add an animation player as a child. From the animation player, we can create a new animation. Godot 3.2 has a new feature which allows you to auto-insert keyframes. We can enable this by clicking the car icon in the top toolbar. To have this feature update the position automatically, we first make a position track by clicking the platform and then the key icon next to its position on the right. Let's set the animation length to 8 seconds and scrub the timeline to 4 seconds. Now, if we move the platform in the editor, we can see a new keyframe has been created. All we need to do now is make sure the animation loops and starts automatically when the scene is loaded. We hope these changes will be merged into the official demo soon. Until then, you can check out these changes and more using the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to drop us a comment or head over to our Discord. Cheers!